Hi there. Thank you for joining this webcast featuring library theme development. I'm Lori Lamford, the Senior Marketing Manager at Zen Solutions Group. And today's presentation will be led by Laura Jones, Senior Graphic Designer here at Zen Solutions. Today's agenda will include a brief introduction to Zen Solutions, and then we'll turn it over to Laura for a presentation on developing themes in LifeRay. All right, Dunn Solutions Group it has a long history of delivering innovative business technology solutions to companies. We are headquartered just outside of Chicago and have offices in Minneapolis, Raleigh, St. Louis, and Bangalore, India. Our offerings fall into three practice areas. Our application development solutions feature portals, e-commerce and content managed websites, mobile application development, and custom application development. Our business intelligence solutions feature analytics and BI platforms, as well as data warehouse and data integration services. We are an authorized SAP and LifeRay training provider and offer classroom, virtual, private, and custom options. We believe training is important because once we deliver a solution, we want to make sure that those who need to know how to use it um, do, and they're able to maintain it as well. We offer several out-of-the-box analytics frameworks. Our BI frameworks include solutions for accountable care organizations, corporate legal departments, higher ed institutions, and optical shops. Our application development practice develops solutions that are custom and help differentiate our customers from their competitors. We provide solutions on portals such as LifeRay, as we mentioned before, e-commerce and content managed websites, custom transactional applications, as well as mobile applications for integration with backend systems. We've been doing custom application development since our inception in 19, 1988, and it's one of our core practice areas. We maintain strong partnerships with top technology companies. And we are a Platinum LifeRay Services partner, one of the first in LifeRay's partner program beginning in 2005. And we are a certified LifeRay training partner, one of only three certified training partners in the US. We help companies maximize their LifeRay investment through private and customized training programs. We offer a global delivery model that gives us the flexibility to build teams that are best suited to our clients' timelines, budgets, and preferences. Projects that utilize offshore resources are always led by someone local and US-based. Our clients, some of which are included here, are a combination of Fortune 500, mid-market companies, government agencies, and nonprofits across all verticals. About 80% of our business is commercial clients, 20% is nonprofits and government. All right, at this point, I am going to turn it over to Laura for today's presentation on library theme development. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you find it helpful. Thanks, Lori. Um, I am Laura Jones. I'm a senior graphic designer here at Dawn Solutions Group, um, and we're going to be talking today about the basics of library theme development. So we'll be talking a little bit about um, the theme anatomy, some of the files that make up a theme, um, also making uh, customizations to our themes, and then talk about some neat stuff you can do with library themes. Um, we'll be looking primarily um, for those examples at a client site um, that we have created a theme for, which is National Guardian Life Insurance Company. Um, their website is nglic.com if you want to take a look, and it's a responsive um, 6.1 library theme that we developed for them. So let's go ahead and jump in. First thing we'll talk about um, in a little bit is, you know, what basically does the theme do? Um, we know they're going to change the look and feel of our websites, but they also give us access to um, a lot of different handy tools, things like JavaScript and Alloy uh, UI frameworks. Um, and they also allow us to utilize things like templates for dynamic content, portlet embedding, and the use of backend variables. So they can really allow us to make our sites dynamic and pretty neat. So you can see here on the screen um, just an example of you know, the basic classic theme. And then our National Guardian theme up on the top. So you can see you can really um, give the site some interest and something cool to look at. And also something that is going to be functional for your clients. So with that, let's hop out of here. And I actually want to do some demoing in my free developer studio and actually look at um, themes uh, and look at the files behind them. So, um, 
do is we'll look at the NGLIC site first. So this is um, just a local instance on my machine of the team, um, but it's the same thing that the client has. So let's look at the different pieces that make up our page. Um, the first thing that we have at the top is the dock bar, pretty standard. Below that we have our header or banner area, and this is going to contain things like our logo, um, navigation, maybe a search, things like that. Below in the white area here we have our content. So this is where all of the portlets for our different pages are going to fit. Um, and the layout of those portlets is defined by um, a layout template. And we'll talk a little bit about those later. Um, below our content, in this area down here, we have our footer. And then we obviously have you know, some style sheets and CSS that's applied to this page, as well as images um, and things like that that are building out the design for this page. So let's hop in Library Developer Studio and actually create a new theme. And we'll just take a look and see what the different files that make up the theme are. We'll just create a theme here, a test theme. And we'll go ahead and build that really quickly. If we take a look at our Docker folder, um, we can take a look at the files that come up with the theme um, out of the box when we create it. So we've got several different folders here. Um, the divs folder we'll talk about in a second, but um, we've got CSS, uh, so a bunch of different style sheets already uh, set up here. We've got a bunch of different images, all sorts of different folders uh, dealing with different areas of the site. We've got a JavaScript folder, a templates folder that has different velocity templates inside of it. And then we've got a web init folder, which has some different property files in it. So why do we have all these files created for us from the start? Why are we, are we just ending up starting with a blank um, setup and we're adding you know, our own files to it? Um, that's because life for a theme are built, um, not built from scratch, they're built um, off of a base theme. So basically, when you create the theme with Life for Developer Studio, um, it gives you this base theme and all these files out of, um, automatically in the beginning so that you can kind of build off of those files to create your custom theme. So let's go ahead and take a look at what these base theme files look like in the browser. So we're going to go ahead and select our test theme, which is right here. Go ahead and save. And take a look at what it actually looks like without any custom styling applied to it. So we can see um, we still have the same elements on the page. Um, we have our logo, so you can't see it on the white background. Um, we have the name of the site, the name of the page, our navigation here, and it's in this unordered list. Um, we have breadcrumbs for the page, our content, which is still in our layout template, so there's a one over three template for that. And then we've got our footer here at the bottom. So we've got the same basic pieces of the page, the dock bar, um, but obviously most of the styling is stripped out and we're just seeing um, kind of the bare bones base theme that comes with Library. So let's take a look at those files in a little bit more depth and just talk about what they are and what they do. So in the CSS folder, um, we've got all sorts of files. The first one we'll look at is main.css. And this file you'll see basically pulls in all these other files that are in the folder. So um, pulls in some styling for the dock bar, navigation, portlets, things like that. And the very last style sheet that it calls in is custom.css. And if we open that one, we can see that custom.css is empty. So this is basically the main area where we're going to go in and add our customizations for our theme. Um, let's say we wanted to change something for the dock bar. We wouldn't necessarily want to edit this file. Probably best to just leave it be um, and just override the styling. For example, 
in our custom style sheet. And then that way all of our style, our custom pieces are, of CSS are organized and things like that. Um, but we'll just close this in for now. And you can dig through these style sheets if you want to take a look at you know, what the styling is here, but for the most part, uh, you won't need to modify too much of this stuff. Then we have our images folder. And again, we saw this has a lot of different things in it. Um, you can see these are named, obviously. These images have to do with the blog. Um, these have to do with calendars. You can also add images to this uh, list as well if you have custom images. You can do that. Um, in the JavaScript folder, we have a main.js file. And this is just basically an empty file um, that we can plug some JavaScript into. Um, you can also add additional files to this folder if you want. And we've got then our templates. So let's go through these really quick. Um, init custom is basically an empty file that we get um, with the base theme. And basically, this file is going to be where we're going to add all of our um, custom velocities of April. So anything we have um, to add to our site. We'll take a look at this later for what, and see what we did for NGL with this. The navigation file is what builds our unordered list our navigation here based upon the pages that we have in our navigation. Um, portal pop-up is a uh, velocity file that has to do with um, basically any kind of pop-up or configuration menus use this template. Portlet.vm, uh, this is used by all portlets for the site. Um, again, these so these couple um, no, wouldn't necessarily modify, but you can if you like. And then the most important one is our portal normal.vm. This is basically um, our HTML structure, our, our index.html for our site. So it basically um, takes all these other template files and plugs them into this file and builds our page. So if we look through it really quickly, we can see all the different pieces of the page that we looked at earlier. We've got um, our opening HTML tags, our header section, opening body tag. We've got our dock bar. Below that we have our wrapper section and in that sits our header or banner with our logo, the site name, site title, I'm sorry, page title. All these things that are here at the top of our page. We've also got a sign-in link, our navigation template, so this is one of these templates that's sitting here um, being pulled into the page. The breadcrumbs, in this section here is where our port lists are getting pulled into the page, depending on what page it is and what port lists need to be on that page. And below that, we have our footer. So this is the page we're really going to make a lot of changes to, just for structuring and for um, styling, things like that. So pulling out different areas that I may not want to show, things like um, you know, site name, page title, things like that, we possibly may not need on our site. And then last but not least, our web init file uh, folder. This one holds a couple different property files. Um, we'll look at these a little bit later. Um, I made some changes to those later too. So these are our base theme files. Um, and Lifery is nice enough to build all these out for us. So we don't have to start from scratch. We have something to work from. Um, and when we modify these, we don't really want to modify these files directly. We want to extend the base theme. We don't want to replace the files. So the way we do that is with the diffs folder. Basically, any files that are added to this folder are going to re uh, override the respective files in the base theme. So what we're going to do is, if we want to make changes to any of these files, we're going to create the same directories and files in the diffs folder and then make our changes there. What this is going to do is organize all of our customizations um, and keep everything nice and separate so we know what we've been making changes to um, and keeps everything nice and neat and organized. So let's go ahead and make a couple changes to um, our theme and see those customizations in our browser. So what we're going to do is recreate our folder structure first off. So if we want to make a customization to custom.css, copy that file, paste it into our CSS folder under divs. Make sure we're opening that file and not the one under our root. And we can go ahead and make some changes. So let's say we want to make the background gray. And maybe we want to make the text. Go ahead and save 
Yes. And then let's take, let's just refresh our browser here. And you can see we've got our red text and our gray background. And all of our customizations are kept separate and organized uh, under our divs folder. Um, so we know what we've been editing and where all our changes are. We can also make some changes to our template file as well. So um, let's go ahead and look at the portal normal file and we'll actually make some changes to that. So let's go ahead and create a templates folder. Copy and paste our portal normal file in there. And let's say we want to update the footer. Right now our footer is, is powered by LifeRush, but we want to change it. So let's go ahead and update that. And just save it. And then we'll go ahead and refresh again. And we can see we've got our custom footer right here. So it's very easy to make changes um, if you know what you're doing, uh, especially your CSS. You know, we really want to add um, some unique um, kind of stuff to this, our site, and we don't, this isn't going to cut it. <laughs> so we have to add some cool stuff. Um, but this just gives you a very simple example of how do you can change your template files and how you can change your um, CSS files. Um, and again, using the diffs folder. So we're not overwriting the base theme, we're just extending it and um, have it, we have our own directory for all our changes. So let's hop back out of our little test theme that we created and go back to our nicer looking National Guardian theme. Okay, better. And we're going to take a look at the um, the disk folder for our National Guardian theme, which I've got here in my Free Developer Studio, and just start talking about some of the different changes um, and the neat things that we did for National Guardian um, with this theme. So let's close our test theme file and open up some of our stuff here. Um, and we'll take a look at our browser first to just kind of look at what we've got going on here. So. One of the things that we did for our National Guardian is we have this little sub-navigation up here. Um, and we actually added a new template file, a new velocity file to be displayed in area here. And what we did is we look at our portal normal custom file. We scroll down a little bit. We can see within our header section, we've got things like our logo, site name, page title. And then we have this little piece here that's pulling in a new template. So this is pulling in top nav underscore VM. And if we open that file, it's basically just um, creating a list of different pages um, under a specific directory. So we basically can dynamically pull these links in. Um, and we just wanted to separate that out into its own little template. So you can create new template files here. You're not just stuck with the default five that LifeRay gives you, which is pretty cool. Uh, other things that people might pull out are things like footers. Um, but you're welcome to do whatever you like with that. Uh, another thing that we did here in this area is we're using um, a velocity call to add a search to the site. So going back to the site, you can see it's right here. This is just a site-wide search um, for the website. Also, another cool thing that we did was we actually um, embedded some content using velocity variables. So if we look at the bottom of the page, this footer content, um, it's not actually built into our theme. So this content is actually web content, um, both this and the copyright content, actually, um, so that the customer can actually go into the web content and make changes without having to redeploy a theme. They just have to dig into the web content, find the footer, um, and then make whatever changes they want. So let's take a really quick look at how to do that. So to um, embed content using velocity variables, we need to look at a couple of different files. One of those is our life-free look and feel, that XML file, our property file, and that lives in the web init folder. So you can see here we've created some settings for our theme. We have a variety of them, but we'll look at the footer content specifically for now. So we can see we've created a setting um, with a key of footer content ID and a value. And if we go to our content 
for our site. Let's open that up really quickly. And then when we look up the footer content, you can see the ID of the footer is equal to this value right here that we set. So basically we're just saying the footer content ID should be equal to this value, which we know by looking in the back end what that is. The next file we need to make changes to is our init custom file, which is going to be in our templates from here, and again under div. We'll take a look at that again, we have a lot of stuff in here, but we'll primarily look at are these ones here. You can see we're taking, um, using um, this file to create a new, I, uh, I'm sorry, a new velocity variable called footer content ID, and we're setting that equal to our theme setting, which is the ID of the content that we just set. Uh, in our like rows and field file right here. And then we're creating another variable called footer content and basically plugging that content into um, that ID. So if we go and then and look at our port portal normal file, okay. and scroll down here towards the bottom where the footer is, you can see we're referencing that footer content variable right here. So we just created a div to put it in the same ID that's right here, the same velocity variable is right here. So that's what allows us to pull in our content here below. Pretty nifty. And again, we're using it for a couple of different areas, uh, copyright information and things like that. Um, but a really cool thing that you can do and just make the, um, the theme a little bit more usable for the client, uh, easier to update. Next, what I want to talk about um, that is a neat thing to do with library themes and kind of go through a little bit is um, SAS or SASE CSS. Um, I'm just going to briefly touch on it. There's a lot of cool things you can do with it, um, but we'll just talk about a few things. Um, it stands for Syntactically Awesome Style Sheet. And basically, in a, it's an extension of CSS3. Um, it adds some really neat stuff. Uh, it makes our code more concise and readable, helps with performance. Um, so I'll just show you a couple examples of how that works um, and how to do it. So um, one of the really neat things you can do with SAS is nesting in your style sheets. So one type of nesting that um, they allow is selection nesting. So let's take a look at one of those here. You can see in our responsive style sheet, we've got a bunch of instances where we're calling this breadcrumbs right mobile ID here. Um, and what we can do is actually nest these into each other so that we don't have to keep calling this over and over again in our code. So what we can do is just update our structure a little bit here. And we can grab all of these items, paste them inside, get rid of our hanging one here. And what we can do is lose all these elements here. So we're basically nesting underneath this existing property of right, breadcrumbs right mobile. We're leaving this tag open, and then we're calling in um, the rest of our pieces here. Get these in formatting and clean this up. But you can see it really helps you organize your code and keep it kind of neat and clean. And again, simplifies it. You know, we're, we're cutting out all that extra copy that we don't need. So that's selector nesting. Uh, another type of nesting that we can do is property nesting. So we go up a little bit on our code. Here we go. Um, you can see under this piece of styling where we have some font properties here that we're calling in. So we can actually do is nest these together too. So let's say we had you know six of these. I mean, actually we only have two here, but we'll use it for example. We can nest those together too. So we've got our size and our weight. We'll just nest these inside because we'd like to. And again, we can lose the beginning of the piece of code there. And again, keep it organized and clean. Whole idea of nesting. Um, we also have uh, the opportunity to do some parent referencing uh, with nesting. So take a look at our custom style sheet. And you can see here we're creating some styling for our links um, and the hover link. What we can actually do is um, use an ampersand to um, combine these and nest them. Just like that. So 
again, just some shortcuts to kind of um, group your pieces of code together. Um, somewhat simplify them, um, but keep them organized and uh, neat stuff. Uh, one last thing I'll show you is um, for SAS is variables, which are really cool. Um, what we'll look at is near the bottom of our sheet here. Right here. We've got a bunch of different instances of border radius um, for our CSS styling for various browsers. If we know this is possibly a value that we're going to use over and over and over again, what we can do is um, replace this value with a variable. So, call this border radius. We can just replace every instance of it with that. And then, so for example, if maybe we were starting with the border radius of 20, but the client decided, you know, we want to change it to 10, we can easily do that um, at the top of our page, and that's where we're going to reference this variable. So if we scroll to the top, you see I already have this reference to this variable, and then we have the equal to a value. So we can easily change this to 10 or 4 or whatever we want. For our values. So another really cool thing that you can do with um, SAS, um, so again, more options, but these are just a couple highlights of uh, what you can do with it. Um, look into it, it's very cool stuff. Um, we also have, um, in this theme in particular, uh, is responsive. Uh, let me build that into this. You see, show you kind of in browser, kind of the different responsiveness features we have for it. The nice little pop up menu. Well, we built that in um, using media queries. And we can take a look at our responsive style sheet um, and just talk about that briefly as well. Uh, at the top, we have all of the styles that have to do with um, mobile specific elements of the site. And then below that, we start our media queries. So our media queries are basically um, querying specifically on the browser side, the width of the browser. So depending on the, the width of the browser, what styling do you want to apply? So for example here, um, if the maximum width of the browser is at least um, 1,100 pixels, we're going to see this styling. If it's not, uh, we won't. So it's a really neat and uh, flexible tool that you can use um, to build out your queries. And ours aren't built on specific breakpoints. They're really just built on um, you know, where our site breaks. So anytime we need to tweak anything as we're resizing down, um, that's where we're making our changes. Um, we're not specifically doing it at you know, 32480, 720, or anything like that, you know, just as we need it. So, um, very cool stuff as well. And also, something to keep in mind uh, is content strategy um, for your responsive sites. Um, you know, what content's on the page, what's important for users to see when they're on the page, um, and what, you know, they can lose or can be hidden under menus or um, simplified. We have a simplified footer here, for example, um, for our mobile users. So one last thing we'll talk about um, before we close today is Alloy UI Framework. Um, it's basically a neat little um, UI framework that comes with Light Gray. Um, you may have seen it uh, used more, most um, familiarly uh, with things like carousels, form builders, uh, things of that nature. Uh, one thing that we used it for is this little um, translation pop-up that we added for NGL. Instead of having to code this, what we're using is LA for this. So we'll take a look at the code here so we can show you what that is as well. Um, got that under our init custom file. And you can see we have some code for that here. So um, we're just referencing a UI dialog to pop up um, that iframe and pop up some content limits within it, specifying you know, what the uh, window should say and things like that. So it's just a really easy way to um, you know, reuse the piece of the UI, have everything look consistent without having to code it yourself. So that concludes my brief overview of life racing development and how uh, life racings work. Um, hopefully, you know, give you a good understanding how to build custom themes and some cool things you can do besides just styling your pages um, to actually make your, your site dynamic. I left out a lot of things you can do with themes, obviously. Um, there's 
very full featured um, options on here, uh, things like color schemes, uh, embedding portlets, also configurable team settings, um, some really neat stuff. But um, hopefully this gives you a little insight into the process and gets you interested in creating your own team. Thanks, everybody. Do you guys keep this sign this anywhere special or you just toss it? <laughs> okay. I think we're good for the day. It's such a beautiful sign. <laughs> yeah. For um, this like reason, it's just a, they're just recording the webinar ahead of time. I'll tell you the next So, this one is all set. It went pretty good. <laughs>